Let's take a look then at what's going on in the south of the country now. And we want to focus in on Mariupol up there to the east. Now, um, this city has been under bombardment for days now, hasn't it, from Russian forces. It is still in Ukrainian control. But are we seeing a change of strategy as far as the Russians are concerned towards civilians in places like Mariupol? So we may be. The, the thing that's been clear from the start is Russian forces will come out of Crimea and, and head east to link Russia to Crimea by, by land. That fight initially was focused on the Ukrainian military. What we're seeing now are very clear signs of the Russians directing force not at the military, but at the civilian population. So turning off power, water and food supplies, shelling residential areas, and as become very clear in Mariupol, shelling these evacuation routes. This doesn't appear to be an accident. This is about ratcheting up the pressure on Ukrainian government by directly targeting the civilian population. So we're going to see more of that, you think? We should expect to see more of that, yes. OK, and let's take a look at some of the other port cities as well, because we've got Kherson, which is in Russian hands. We also have Odessa, which is in Ukrainian hands for the time being, but again, uh, Russian forces advancing on Odessa. Why are these port cities so important? So the assessment remains that Russia would come out of Crimea, turn east to close the coast, by connecting to Russia and go west to Odessa. If they're successful in that and they own all the ports on the Black Sea, they isolate the Ukrainian economy from the sea. And Ukraine exports a great deal of agricultural produce, particularly wheat, and also a lot of things like uh, uranium ore and titanium ore. The Ukrainian economy relies on access to the sea and, and Russia, if it heads on this current trajectory, is trying to remove that. So the south and the port's very important, but also to the north, the capital, Kiev, again, crucial here, is still um, under Ukrainian control, but, but Russian forces are moving in. How vulnerable is Kiev, do you think, today? What we are clearly seeing, and this has been unfolding ever since day one, are Russian forces moving on Kiev as the political centre of gravity. And these advances, as you're indicating here, are about getting around the edge of the city, perhaps trying to encircle it. What we're seeing now is fighting on the cities that are outside Kiev and on the, on the outskirts of Kiev. What we should expect to see over the coming days is the sort of tactics we've seen in places like Kharkiv and Sumy beginning to appear on, on Kiev to put pressure on the government. And, and overall, what should we be looking out for in Ukraine over the next few days? So I think we're going to see three things uh, uh, unfold concurrently over the next few days, and they're all about putting pressure on the Ukrainian government. The first is the, the attempt to complete that um, movement in the south to disconnect the economy from the sea and to take uh, uh, Odessa. The second is the, is the second is the movement on the government in, in Kiev. That's some days away now, but that's likely to ratchet it up. And the third will be dialing up the pain on the civil population deliberately in order to try and get Kiev uh, to sue for peace.